Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Good Cop, Bad Cop by Pull the Pin Games. This is a three to eight player board game that could take roughly five to 25 minutes to play, and it's for ages 13 and up. And in the game Good Cop, Bad Cop, you're going to be playing as a police officer in a police precinct. You're either going to be an honest cop or a crooked cop, depending on your alignment. And you may be either an agent or the kingpin. The agent and his honest cops are going to be looking for the kingpin to defeat and destroy the kingpin and ultimately win as honest cops, and vice versa for the kingpin and the crooked cops looking to defeat and find the agent, and once again, if that black guy dies, then the other team will win. You are going to be dealt alignment cards at the beginning of the game, which will determine whether you're an honest cop or if you're a crooked cop, and of course whether you're the agent or if you're the kingpin. And throughout the game, you'll be taking an action. And on your card, it tells you what you can do. You can go ahead and investigate other players' uh, alignment cards, equip equipment, and thusly allow you to utilize that equipment to defeat or help you in some way. You can arm yourself with one of these guns here, and you can also shoot slash fire an opponent that you are pointing your gun at. Uh, after you've chosen one of these four actions, you're going to then take aim, and hopefully you're going to defeat the opposing team members. If your team is the left last, last standing, then you're going to win, otherwise you might end up losing. Now we're also taking a look at the expansion for Zombies, which I believe is, ah, right over here. The Zombies expansion is going to include a new way to play the game, where if you die and you're not the kingpin or the agent, you are going to turn into a zombie, and thusly you'll be using zombie arms throughout the game, which you'll be pointing at players, similar to guns. And if you can shoot them, um, you can turn them into zombies, or if you are able to shoot them or bite them with your zombie uh, arms and they are either the agent or the kingpin, then you will basically have the zombie side win. And that's basically what we're talking about, the main base game and of course the zombie expansion for the game, Good Cop, Bad Cop, which has a ton of other stuff in it as well. Setting up the game for Good Cop, Bad Cop is quite easy, and of course with the zombie expansion as well, all you'll be doing is putting out the map if you have one on the main table. Then take out all the guns you might need and place them on the gun spaces. The next is the wound tokens. You'll place two of them down on the wound space area and all the zombie hands will go over on the bottom left. Then you'll take all the equipment and shuffle them up and deal them out to this board area face down. Then you'll take the integrity cards. These are basically the roles in which you're going to be playing this game. Make sure that you set aside one of the kingpin cards and one of the agent cards and then a number of cards equal to the number of players. Additionally, with this deck here, base number of players playing for your integrity deck will determine how many cards you add. Playing with four players, add none of the cards that have numbers in the top right area of the card. Five players, add all the five pluses. Six players, add the fives and the sixes. Sevens, add the fives, sixes, and seven cards, and then shuffle the deck. Now that you got your five cards for your five player game with an agent and a kingpin, you'll shuffle these cards up so that you do not know where they are and who they're going to be given to. And then give one to each player. After each player has one of these cards, then you're going to go ahead and take the rest of the integrity deck and shuffle it up as well. This is the reason why you're doing this is so that you know that no player is going to get uh, uh, the agent and the kingpin together. It's going to be that one player will get one, one player will get the other. After these are shuffled, you'll deal out two more to each player so that every player around the table has a total of three cards. And this should equal out exactly as the number is required, minus one. Once you have done that, now you've got your three integrity cards next to you, you have your player reference in front of you, and your deck of equipment is nice and shuffled along with the discard pile right there, you're basically ready to begin the game good cop, bad cop with the zombie expansion. Yep, it's that simple. Playing the game is also quite simple. Basically what you'll do is you'll take the top three or the main three cards you have in front of you and you will look at them. If you have more blue cards than you do have red cards, you are an honest cop. However, if you have more red cards than you have blue cards, you are a crooked cop. This only changes if you have the agent or the kingpin in your stack of cards here. You will go ahead and reveal them, and if you see here there is a kingpin, and if these two are blue, you would still be the kingpin, thusly you would still be a crooked cop. And the same thing would be said for an agent. If you are the agent or kingpin, your alignment is not going to ever change based on your cards, you're going to be that specific type of agent. After you've looked at these cards, you can go ahead and position them in any way, shape, or form you'd like on your playing area so that they go from left to right, but you only know the positions of them. And the same would be said for every other player. And then you're basically ready to begin the game. 
Um, last thing you're going to do is take an equipment card and give it to each player. Equipment cards are things that can be utilized when they re are required to be utilized. Um, and they'll say something interesting like investigate each player who's holding a gun or reveal a certain card or cards from other people as integrity stacks. Uh, and then the player who last fired a gun is the player who is going to start the game. They are going to go ahead and take one of the actions. Action one is to investigate. Investigating is simply looking or peeking at one of one of these players' integrity cards. You'll look at it and put it face down. And then your turn is over. The next player might want to equip. In order to equip, they're going to need to take one of these uh, equipment cards. But they're also going to have to reveal one of their integrity cards. They can reveal any card they would like, including whether they're the kingpin or the agent, but I would suggest, suggest you not do that early on. And then you'll take this equipment. Remember though, you can only ever have one equipment. So if you have and happen to ever have two, you'll have to discard one of them face up into the discard pile. The next thing you can do is arm yourself. So if this next player is going and they have an idea of what somebody is, they might want to arm themselves. They'll have to also reveal an integrity card in order to do so. And they'll take a gun and position it in front of them. Um, the last action you can do is fire. If you are pointing your gun at somebody and as an action you'd like to, you could fire at that person. If you fire at a player who is not the kingpin or the agent, they are going to be out of the game in the base game. If you fire at a person who is the kingpin or the agent, that player will reveal and then they will take the wounded token. If they are wounded, they're also going to draw an equipment card from the equipment deck. Then after that, uh, those were all the four main actions. Now a turn will look like this though. You will take one of your actions, then you will take aim if you have a gun, and then you'll check to see if you win the game. When you gather a gun, so if I were to choose to equip or arm myself with a weapon, my next action or my next portion of the turn is going to be to aim. So I can go ahead and point this at a player of my choosing. So he could go ahead and place this and fo focus it on this player here. And thusly, on the next turn, when it's this player's turn again, they could choose as their action to fire. Now, when they fire, it shoots this player, the gun is dropped. And this player is going to then reveal uh, to see what they are. If they are a regular player, they're just out. If they're the kingpin or uh, if they are the agent, they're going to go, oh, okay, I am the kingpin. I'm going to have to reveal myself. I'll take a wounded token and I'll draw an equipment card. And if I have more than I should have, I have to discard. And the game is over when either the agent or the kingpin take two damage. Now with the zombie expansion, which is the main new thing that has been added to the game, on the back of your player reference with the new zombie expansion it explains how this works. When you die as a non-agent or kingpin, you become a zombie. So in this case here, if I didn't have the kingpin and I was shot, I would lose everything. All these cards are gone now. And I'm going to turn into a zombie. Um, I'm going to be able to take this card here, this, 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 these arms here, and on my turn, I'll have two options now. I can either equip or draw one of these cards here, or I can bite. I'm going to be able to shoot somebody and basically uh, injure them, which possibly will turn them into a zombie as well. The only way the zombie players can win, though, is if the kingpin or agent are wounded and the zombie player is able to bite them. If you can do that, then the zombie team will win. So now there are three new conditions to winning the game. The Crookeds defeat the Honest Cops, the Honest defeat the Crooked Cops, or the zombie team is able to convert each other and eventually be able to harm, with this little hand here, the agent or kingpin that has been wounded throughout the game. And that's pretty much how the game goes. You will go ahead and rinse and repeat, start again if you would like, and play with this new expansion, the Zombie Expansion. As you noticed over here in the corner, there are additional expansions like the Equipment Expansion, there is the Undercover Expansion, there is the Bombers and Traders Expansion, and this one over here is the Promoted Expansion, which involves a little bit of more promotional tools, which is kind of cool. And yes, this is a full-fledged, large, trader type game. Okay, anyway, we'll talk about my review now. Okay, some caveats for the game. The first thing, if you turn into a zombie because you have been killed and you are not the agent or kingpin, you will get to keep this arm, you'll put it facing towards you, and you'll get this equipment card. And this is going to stay with you if you have an equipment card. Otherwise, though, you will lose all your integrity cards. Remember, make sure that the hands are facing you because on your next turn, you will have to basically do one of the two things, which is equip or bite. And sadly, because you cannot bite yourself, you will equip and then you will take aim and thusly change this to another player. 
if you ever drop your arms or something tells you to drop an arms or firearms, instead of doing that, you're gonna make it face back to yourself. And the same is said after you bite somebody. So you're never gonna be able to bite twice in a row. That being said, guns work the same way as well. If you have a gun and you're aiming at somebody and you shoot them, this gun is going to fall down. You're gonna place it back into the stack here. So the only way you can get, get it back is if you take it once again, reveal an integrity card, if you have one, which if you already have them all revealed, you can just take this action for free. And then you'll point it at somebody on the next turn you can shoot. And most of the time shooting is going to take two turns in order to do so. Uh, there are also equipment cards in the deck here. These will revolve around the main types of expansion you're, expansions you're using in the game. And you can use all of the expansions to play this game. You can mix and match them. Uh, you can utilize these zombie type equipments that can actually turn some, some players back from zombies into human beings. And all these cards are unique in how they work. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward type trader game. You're playing kind of like the game Resistance or One Night, or if you're looking at the larger games, Shadows Over Camelot or BSG or Dark Moon, uh, but it's a rather short, quick, to the point game. This game can last anywhere between 5 and 20 minutes. If you're able to find that kingpin or agent rather quickly, you can defeat them. Uh, some players can play a little bit more meticulously, looking at different players' integrity cards, trying to determine what this player's alignment is and what that player's alignment is and how they function with your alignment. Determining with the zombie expansion when you add this guy in, it's always better to have more players. And when you start turning players into zombies, you have to realize that they might gun for you as well. This adds a full, unique, intricate way of playing this game. Now you have to not only focus on killing the agent or kingpin depending on your alignment, but determining whether it's worth defeating an opponent or especially an ally, <laughs> um, because they're going to turn, they're going to transform, and now you might have a gun to your back. Whereas before in the base game, if you defeat somebody who's on your team, or maybe not on your team, and they're just a regular player in the game, uh, they're going to go for you maybe next game, depending on how they feel about playing. But in the moment when they get defeated instantly, and now they're still in the game, because this allows you to stay in the game, um, they might choose to set their sights on you. And thusly, as an agent or kingpin, you have to be very well aware of that and make sure you make the right decision before you just go off pointing guns at specifically anybody. I really like the idea of this new expansion being added to the game because before, when you were playing with the other expansions and you were eliminated, it's a quick game, so elimination was never that big of a deal, but now this allows you to stay in the game. Zombie players are now part of the game and they're always going to have that option to fire at another player, so this will get placed on me and then I am going to be able to point at somebody and next turn I might fire at them, I might change. It really just depends on what I want to do as a zombie. There's not as many things you can do as a zombie, but it still lets you continue playing the game, which is great. And it gives you the opportunity to win and decide who you want your team to be part of your team when you win. Additionally, zombies might never be part of the game. If you find out who the kingpin or the agent is, and you fire at them twice, and no other player has been killed, then this is just not going to be attached. And maybe you'll draw some equipment cards that might not matter throughout the game. Overall, a solid expansion. This thing has a lot of legs to stand on, and a lot of arms as well, allowing you to stay in the game, allowing you to think about who you want to choose to target and why, and maybe or may, may or may not be beneficial to do so. My main crit critiques with this game, as always, are the same. When you're playing with three or four players, there's going to be a limited amount of things that happen. The games are relatively quick, and there's less to be done, less socialization, and so good cop, bad cop is always best to be played with at least five players, if not all the way up to eight because that's where it really shines that's where a lot of things can happen a lot of players start turning into zombies and it's just a ton of fun if you're interested in a game where you're playing from on one side versus another and you're learning and deducing on what players are playing as and you want a bunch of tiny expansions that are very simple and easy to understand that you can attach to the game in any way that you would choose to see fit then good cop bad cop is the granddaddy of that it does a very great job of it, it has won a ton of awards and no doubt no there's no reason why it would um, and just adding more fun is always going to be great. This one specifically is probably my favorite expansion of the bunch now just because it allows me to continue playing the game as opposed to being eliminated in a larger player variant. So overall, yes, Zombies is a solid expansion, especially if you already own the game Good Cop, Bad Cop. I strongly suggest you take a look at it. Link down below. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Good Cop, Bad Cop. It's on Game Found. You know what to do. You can also go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like, if you've earned your
your subscription if you watched more than one of our videos so far and you've also uh, appreciated them then hit that bell notification button we live stream every sunday at 6 30 p.m pst on facebook twitch and youtube and on wednesdays every other wednesday on whatnot we sell games we play games we talk about games and interact with that community over there all right guys that's all i got for you this time and as always i look forward to biting you with my zombie arms and next time even though you cannot bite with arms. Maybe I grab you with the arms and then I bite you. I should rethink this outro. <laughs>